Hi, my name is Suzanne Grandy. I am a certified master groomer and I like to share my passion for grooming with you. I wanna show you how cooperative he is. He comes every two weeks for a bath and blow dry. So I wanna show you the freedom of movement that he has in the shop and how he cooperates. You ready, Marco? Let's go. <laughs> Good boy. Yes. Come on, let's go. Good boy. So I have nothing in my hands, nothing in my pockets. He's just a very willing participant, aren't you? You ready for a bath? Uh, we're going to go get a bath. So I will show you how. And he does tend to get a little matted under his harness, but nothing serious. He's got a lot of hair. All right, buddy. You got a lot of hair. So before I get started, I'm going to hook him to the groomer's harness to keep him from popping up. Because it is anchored down in the bottom of the tub. Okay. As you can see, he likes to be very active in the tub, so this just helps to keep him in place. Right? I'm gonna wet him down with the shampoo. It's already diluted. This is Pet Silk Rainforest Shampoo and Conditioner. I find it works very good for me for all coat types. I don't have any skin irritation or um, I don't have dry hands from it. I do all my own bathing. And it leaves me a nicely scissorable coat or my drop coats come out nice as well. So I prefer just one all purpose shampoo than a bunch of things all over the place that might be sitting up and getting bacteria in them. Each shampoo bottle is disinfected after each use, which is really important. It usually takes me two bottles of shampoo for him because he has a lot of hair. His appointment is an hour long. One thing I think a lot of groomers make a mistake of in these drop coats is they do a face, feet, and fanny for a discounted price. So you have all your drop coats coming in for a cheaper price than your full grooms, and it takes twice as long to wash and dry them. So that's a big mistake on my, in my opinion. I charge full price if I pick up my scissors or my clippers. Say if they come in, they say, I just want around the eyes done. And it's been a month, it's a full grown. If that's all you want done, fine. But it's a full grown. And the same with my drop coats. They take every bit as much time as a full, co full coated or a full hand scissor or a full shave down. Same thing. I only handle dogs 1 to 15 pounds, and they're all $65 each. And I spend the full time on each dog. I know, you're silly, aren't you? Yes, I love you. His coat was a little rough when he was going through a change of coat, but now that he's mature, it has settled down and quit matting. If he didn't come every 
two weeks, I might let the shampoo sh sit on longer. But being he's done every two weeks, once it's good and worked in, I can rinse it right out. Because he doesn't have a bunch of ground in grime on him. I start by rinsing around the eyes first and making everything go backwards. That way no soapy water is falling over the eyes. Come at the ears from behind so no water is getting in the ears. I have been using Vetoquinol ear cleansing solution. I switched that today because I'm not sure if the ingredients have changed or not, but in looking up the ingredients, they have changed, I think, because I don't remember this being an ingredient. They're using denatured alcohol, 10%, in the ear cleansing solution. I love that product and it never irritates dog's ears, but I'm just uncomfortable with that. And normally I pay, because I pay retail for my ear cleansing solutions because I want veterinary grade products. So I've been paying like $107 a gallon. And now I'm switching to Epiotic Advanced, which is going to cost me nearly $200 a gallon, which is horrific. But I want the best of the best and I want something that veterinarians cannot argue with as being good. And I also don't want anything with propylene glycol because so many dogs are allergic to it and it causes head shaking. I don't know if you've ever done like the brown doodles and stuff where as soon as you put an ear wash in or you touch anything near those ears they start head shaking for no reason. A lot of times that's propylene glycol in my opinion. So I have to find something without that. So that's the one I settled on. Because I do my bathing and everything myself, I can save money on, on employees and spend it on the docks. So I don't mind. It's worth it. So I'm going to put the conditioner on him full strength and it is warmed and it feels so good when it's warmed. I keep it in a baby bottle warmer along with the shampoo and the ear cleanser. So when I wet them down with shampoo, I'm wetting them down with warm shampoo. It's not overly warm. It's about 98 degrees, which is, you know, a, a lukewarm correct temperature. So... It's a comfortable process to have that shampoo put straight on them with no water. So if he were a poodle, I would be putting the shampoo or the conditioner on first, then the shampoo, because I don't want him over conditioned, but I do want him conditioned. For the drop coats, I shampoo first and then put full strength conditioner on. The poodles, it's diluted, and for drop coats, it's full strength. It's a good boy. And this conditioner works pretty fast. Gives me the results I want, so I can go ahead and rinse them right away. That's another benefit of it going on full strength. Is it's fast.
good boy. He's turning out to be one of my favorite dogs. I just adore him. And his people are so good. They do their homework, they train them, they keep them brushed. It's a really great client. Again, I'm coming from behind on the ears. And I'm going backwards on the eyes. Squeegeeing to make sure everything's out of his coat. When I get towards the end, I start unhooking the harness and making sure it's rinsed under there. Even when I unhook the sides though, it's still connected at the bottom and around here. It's still well off the trachea. So I can get under the sides, move the collar up, rinse under there. Good boy. You always rinse twice as long as you think you need to. We jing off to make sure there's no feeling of any soap or conditioner. Now I'm going to use my ear cleansing solution and fill up each ear completely. And this too is warmed and you notice how my dog's not ducking away and doing this when I put the ear cleanser in. Ever since I started using it warmed, that behavior has completely stopped. It's always been because it's cold or room temperature. They don't like room temperature because my room temperature is like 72. It's a little chill. All right, shake off. My towels are warmed, and it seems like ever since I started using warm towels, my dogs are drying three times faster. It could be my imagination. I don't know, but they are. So I just wrap them up. I don't use chamois, I don't use a fast drying spray, just wrap them up in a warm towel. And I have a bath mat, a thick one, underneath them <clears throat> to absorb any water. I'm just going to work on squeezing them dry. And put a harness on him so he doesn't get too wiggly. to adjust it to the size I think he's going to need because I can use this on a dog anywhere from like two pounds to about 35 pounds.
strokes long and straight, not flicking. to get any one area dry, I rotate, lightly going over each area, all the way around three times at least. I'm nobody to be promoting anything anyway. 
I'm just me. this point, that's the second time around, I focused mainly, mainly on the outer coat. Now I'm going to switch to a slicker brush for the legs, because it's a different coat type down there. I'm going to use the Artero Flexible Slicker. about you but for me this day has been flying by every time I think it's been 15 minutes it's been in 45 minutes when I hold my brush I hold it like this and if I'm going this way I put pressure with my thumb if I'm going this way I put pressure with my finger if I'm going straight down I use it equally on both I'm going straight down like this. I got my finger in the middle of applying pressure. And I'm still not flicking my brush at straight movements. by that is so he's nice and straight and fluffy, not wrinkled or curly. Your dog can dry out ahead of you. Try blow drying with the stand dryer straight from the tub and you find you're getting brush burns, you're using too harsh of a brush or too much pressure. That's why I start with a gentle brush. Okay. The thing I love about this dryer is you can move it with very little effort. That's the nice thing about a wall mount as opposed to a stand dryer. With a stand dryer you're moving the whole stand and moving it over here and up and down. With this it's just a finger. Just the corner of it with a little pressure from my brush.
start on the last go around. I'm going to go ahead and unhook him from underneath. So I can lift him up. He's got good knees, so it's okay to do this. If he had weak knees, I wouldn't do it. I'm keeping both brushes on the table to flip back and forth between them, depending on the area on this last go around. Scrape the skin. 
going to get the mat out, out of there. Take the corner of my brush, put pressure with my heel into the back of the brush and pick it. I personally don't like to demat dirty hair. I feel it causes breakage. And I don't like to brush dirty hair. Not only do I feel it causes breakage, but when you've got urine and stuff underneath, it's sticky. Or you might have sticky stuff from the yard in there. All kinds of things that cause breakage of the hair. It's laying on my comb. My comb back, please. Thank you. So where that mat was, still a little bit. Pick at it some more. I got in the habit of not pre-bath brush out because I've had three of my own cockers in full show coat and I would never touch a brush to them dirty. And two of them were boys and they had full belly coats. And it's just like touching that. It's like, no, thank you. And then my poodles. But my own dogs in full coat, I wash every five days. So they never really have a chance to mat up anyway. So this is that big mat that he had from this harness. If you have a dog at home, do not leave a harness on it. And if you do use a harness, make sure you take it off right after the walk and just do a quick light brushing, just boop, 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 wherever the harness lays to prevent this. And again, this air is on cool, completely cool. So it's cooling him down while I'm doing this. I never use a comb to pull out mats. I only use a comb to check for mats. And if I find one, or even a snag, then I use my brush to get it out. I isolate it. Just pick up that hair and then go back with the comb. Me personally, I love full coat, but my clients have to do their homework. If they don't do their homework, they can't have hair, right? No hair if you don't do your homework. Anyway, he's dry, so we're going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see you again next time. Click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so that you don't miss a single video.